Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you about inverse trig functions and their derivatives. So first of all, we should be somewhat familiar with inverse trig functions from our course in pre-calculus or trigonometry. Um, we get something like y equals sine inverse of x. And what I mean by sine inverse of x is the arc sine of x. So uh, the inverse function of the sine function, OK? Uh, the thing we can't do is we can't say this is sine to the negative 1 power of x. That's not what it means. This is just shorthand for arc sine or inverse sine. All right, uh, so if I want to take the derivative of this function, it's certainly there's something I can do that's quite bad. And that's to say it's like cosine inverse of x. That's terrible. Because this is not sine of x. This is arc sine of x, which is a totally different function. Okay, So how I take the derivative of the inverse sine of x is, first of all, I'm going to rewrite this function. Uh, and if y equals sine inverse of x, if I took the sine of both sides of the equation, I get that sine of y is equal to x. That's an equivalent statement, okay? That sine of y equals x. Okay, now I do know how to take the derivative of sine of something. I don't know how to take the derivative of sine inverse of something, at least not yet. Okay, so what I'm going to do is use implicit differentiation to take the derivative of this guy. So let's do it. The derivative of sine inverse of y, uh, I'm sorry, the derivative of just sine of y, and that's the point, is because I know the sine of y, is cosine of y times the derivative of y using implicit differentiation. The derivative of x, of course, is 1. Now I can solve, and I get that dy over dx is equal to 1 divided by cosine of y. All right, so I've got dy over dx is 1 over cosine of y. Well, what is y? Well, y, going back up to the beginning, is sine inverse of x. So I suppose that I could write that the derivative is 1 over cosine of sine inverse of x. And that's pretty good, but I could do a little bit better, okay? And I want to. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a right triangle. Okay, here's my right triangle. And whenever I think of an inverse trig function like sine inverse of x, what I always think in my mind is inverse functions are angles. Okay, so this is an angle right here. And this is sine inverse of x. It's some angle. Now, what angle is it? It's the angle theta is sine inverse of x. <coughs> it's some angle. So if it's some angle, that means that sine of that angle is x. And if you want to, I could say it's x over 1. So sine of this angle is x over 1. Okay, well, sine is the opposite over the hypotenuse. So the opposite side of this triangle is x, and the hypotenuse is 1. So I can use the Pythagorean theorem to figure out the other leg of the triangle, uh, and it would be the square root of 1 minus x squared. Now, so I set up this triangle. Typically, we call a triangle like this a reference triangle. And now I'm going to go back over here, and I see that what I want is I want the cosine of that angle, sine inverse of x. Remember, an inverse trig function is an angle. Okay, So I want the cosine of that angle. The cosine of this angle is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Okay, So my dy dx is equal to... 1 over cosine of sine inverse of x, which is equal to 1 over, well, the cosine of this angle 
is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent is the square root of 1 minus x squared. And the hypotenuse is 1, so dividing by 1 gives me the same thing. And I have my derivative. So dy over dx is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So if my original function is sine inverse of x, then the derivative is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And that's the first of my derivatives for inverse trig functions. So now let's go over all six of the inverse trig functions and their derivatives. I showed you exactly how you would get the derivative of sine inverse of x. Uh, we could do that for all six of the inverse trig functions and figure out what all of their derivatives are. Uh, and if we did, we'd get the following. The derivative of sine inverse of x is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of cosine inverse of x is negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. The derivative of tan inverse of x is 1 over 1 plus x squared. The derivative of cotan inverse of x is negative 1 over 1 plus x squared. Uh, the derivative of secant inverse x is 1 over absolute x times the square root of x squared minus 1. And the derivative of cosecant inverse of x is negative 1 over absolute x times the square root of x squared minus 1. Now, something you might notice, and it's kind of a cool thing to notice, is that the derivative of sine, tangent, and secant are all positive. The derivative of cosine, the derivative of cotangent, and the derivative of cosecant are all negative. And what are they the negatives of? The guy that they're the co of. Cosecant's derivative is negative the derivative of sine inverse. Uh, the derivative of cotangent is negative the derivative of inverse tangent. And similarly, the derivative of cosecant inverse is the negative of the derivative of secant inverse. And that makes it so, really, you just have to memorize three things. By the way, all six of these guys should be just committed to memory. There's no reason to ever look this up again. We need to know it for too long to not learn it. Uh, so really, you just have to learn three things. The derivative of sine inverse x, the derivative of <coughs> tangent inverse of x and the derivative of secant inverse of x. And then all the cos are sort of free. Uh, you just tack on a negative to the derivative. All right, so let's get into some examples and see how this plays out.